Game one of the NBA Finals was Thursday night, uh, the Warriors and the Celtics in Golden State, and for most of the game, it looked like um, it was just going to be a Warriors runaway. Uh, Steph Curry had a historic first quarter, hitting six threes, 21 points in the first quarter, his best quarter in NBA Finals, in his performances in the NBA Finals. Um, it looked pretty clear that he was on a mission to not only secure himself that finals MVP that everyone seems to really want him to win, but um, really seemed like he had listened to a lot of all the chatter about Marcus Smart um, being a really good matchup for, for him and, and potentially being able to get him out of his rhythm and make it harder on him. And for that first quarter, it looked like it was just going to be another monster Steph night. And then the second quarter came around and he was held scoreless. Uh, finished with 34 points on the night. So after 21 in the first, 13 the rest of the game, and that's kind of just how the game went. Uh, Boston ends up going on a 20-2 run in the fourth quarter to turn a 13-point Warriors lead into a 7-point Celtics lead, which basically just iced the game in the last couple minutes um, for the fourth quarter as a whole. Boston outscored Golden State 40 to 16. Um, and they did it in a, in a variety of ways that they weren't doing at the start of the game in the first half, which really interesting. And it makes me wonder if that's something that that they've just solved and that's how the rest of the series is going to be. Because if that's the case, it's going to be a short series. Um, this The first quarter in particular where Steph went off and had all of, all of his points, or the majority of his points, Boston kept going under on screens. They would run the the Warriors would run this high pick and roll with with Draymond and Steph like they do, and the defender would sag off of Draymond. Hand, Draymond would hand it off to Steph, and Steph would have like three four steps of space to get his shot out. It was like shooting practice for him. So at halftime, it looks like the Celtics really took that to heart and really switched it up because. Especially in that fourth quarter, they were just staying home. They were all up on everybody. They were switching well. They were getting strong defensive efforts from basically everyone that they had on the floor. Uh, Peyton Pritchard had some huge minutes buying time for Marcus Smart to get some rest um, for the stretch run, which then Smart came back in and kind of helped seal the deal. But the, the star of the night, um, Al Horford, which kind of feels like it's becoming a a regular thing. Um, I kind of thought he should have been the Eastern Conference Finals MVP just with how transformative he was for that team's defense and their spacing. And here, he hit six threes tonight, which is the most threes he's ever hit in a game in his career. And they all felt like they were like the biggest threes of the game. Then you take into consideration like the first half uh, especially that first quarter, but that first half, he was just not fighting for rebounds. He was just not boxing out. He was not battling uh, on the defensive glass either, and it showed. And I don't know if he was just saving it for the fourth quarter or what, but it felt like he grabbed every big rebound in the fourth quarter, that he was a part of every big play, and it really felt like as things were kind of slipping away and the Warriors were just doing that Golden State thing, where they go on their big run and put a game out of reach, he just did not let the Celtics um, wither. He didn't let them fold in that moment. And it's going to be big. I think it's going to be a big thing for that team moving forward um, because the two stars did not have good nights. Um, Jalen Brown, 10 points in the fourth quarter. He really turned it around as far as like the narrative for him. Um, I had Celtics fans' friends texting me like, hey, so, like, can we trade Jalen Brown in a pick for Bradley Beal, like, at halftime? And it felt like he heard that because the fourth quarter he had 10 of his 24 points. And I shouldn't say a bad game either for Jason Tatum. It's a very poor shooting game for Jason Tatum. 3 of 17, finished with just 12 points, but 13 assists. And it was those assists late in the game that kind of helped the Celtics seal it. The, he was just driving in, kicking out. He was drawing the, the double team. He was keeping defenders honest and one on one. He wasn't letting um, team like he wasn't letting the Warriors like cheat on covering him. So like if Draymond tried to like 
come in expecting and like bring a double team on Tatum, expecting him to shoot it, he would just kick it right back to Marcus Smart for an open jump. And like the the maturity and the playmaking ability he showed really kept everything in high gear. So he didn't have the best game looking at the box score, but watching the game itself, it's clear he had a huge um, impact on just the overall flow of the team. Uh, the other player who had a game like that with a huge impact on the flow of the game is Derek White, who basically had a kid and has become the greatest shooter the NBA has ever seen. Uh, it felt like he could not miss early on. And more important than that, too, he provided another um, another on-ball like playmaking point guard. Like He took a lot of the burden off of Marcus Smart. He was able to navigate the offense well. He didn't. He only had three assists. But it felt like he, when he was running it, that the offense was just flawlessly performing. He was a part of almost all of the major Celtics um, comeback runs and like helping them come back um, from these big deficits because it was multiple runs that they had to go on throughout the game. Um, and it really like I had a friend put it to me like he said if we if we had wasted the Derek White game that would have been you know that much harder to win because who knows how many times he's going to do that. But what he's done this whole playoffs is hit those open threes and play really strong defense. And tonight that was what he did. So if that's, if that's what the, they're getting from him just in, like on average, that's going to be a huge benefit for them going forward. And for Golden State, it's a tough one. This is a tough Lost. They all said the right things after the game. They all said the, hey, it's first to four, not first, first one to lose, anything like that. But losing home court uh, in a game that you had the thirteen point second half lead, Steph Curry's going nuclear in the first quarter, and then that's kind of just it. They really struggled with him off of the floor. Draymond Green probably shot way too much. He was two for twelve, four points. But he did all the other stuff you want him to do. He had 11 rebounds, 5 assists, did everything else, played good, hard defense. He did foul out near the end of the game. But it just it just didn't feel like it felt like too, too mixed a bag. And the thing I keep tracing that back to is Steve Kerr deciding to take Steph out um, for his usual rest break after the first quarter. So he hit six threes in the first quarter. And then he basically sat out like the next like seven minutes, eight minutes of the game. And by the time he came back in, he started looking for a shot. It wasn't falling as much. He still like, and he went scoreless in the second quarter. And it's like, hey, it's the finals. Like I understand wanting to keep your rotations and everything, but like when Steph Curry's on a heat check performance, <laughs> like let him go. They, they say let the chef cook for a reason. Like just let him do his thing. Um, so I'm really, really curious to see if that's something that's going to change. But I think Steve Kerr is kind of just one of those stubborn coaches that's going to stick to what got them there and not really look into like altering that too much. But we'll see. Um, Clay Thompson, not a very good shooting night, six of fourteen. Just it just was an underwhelming performance around around Steph. It felt like he had that nuclear first quarter and then everything, like, they thought it was over. Like, they were like, okay, cool. They're going to give up now. And the other the other odd thing to me is that after how much Steve Kerr played um, Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody uh, in the last couple rounds, they didn't play at all. They came in at the end for, for garbage time when the game was out of reach. And that's really weird to me. Andre Iguodala... Played 12 minutes in his first game in months. Otto Porter Jr. 24 minutes. He shot the he shot the cover off the ball. I will say that, but I just was surprised that the rotations that he went with. Gary Payton the second was cleared to play, but did not play at all, which is um, probably not a good sign because he's someone that can really help the Warriors with those um, that on ball pressure generating turnovers. And getting that team out in space and running, which is what they need. So hopefully this isn't something where like they just said he was cleared and really he's pretty hurt still and not going to be ready. Um, hopefully it's just a flow of the game thing because I would really like to see him uh, be able to put his fingerprints all over the series because I think he would be a huge 
boost to that Warriors defense, especially with Klay Thompson just not looking the same so far since he's come back from injury on the defensive end. I'm sure he'll have better shooting games. I'm sure Jordan Poole will have better shooting games. But what it's going to be is it's going to be the defense here because the Celtics, they hit 21 threes. They absolutely turned it on when they needed it. And it almost felt like they like knew they could do this the whole time. Like, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Like, it felt like the fourth quarter hit, and they were like, all right, guys, go time. Let's do it. And that was that. They wanted to turn the, the pressure up, and they did it. And that was it before the Warriors even had a chance to process what had happened. So I don't know um, where they're going to turn, where Golden State's going to turn. They're going to need better shooting, but they need those guys to pick it up on defense. If Jordan Poole is getting played off the court because he can't stick with the Celtics players, then they're really going to need a lot from Gary Payton the second, Iguodala, and then they're going to have to at some point turn to Moody and Kaminga, even though they're they're so young. Just because you need people that can that can keep up, and you you don't want to ask Iguodala to you know play to like play high minutes, high intensity minutes, guarding you know those guys when he's. 38 39 I think now at this point like that's just that's not a mashup that's gonna favor you a whole lot so we'll see what happens um I think also before I forget I think uh Nemanja Bialica could probably see some more minutes as well I think he's the type of player that fits really well in that Steve Kerr system uh he can stretch the floor he can play make really well out of the post he's just an intuitive smart player like that that's one that's been he's been like a sneaky like great fit just sitting on the bench waiting to be deployed at the right time so feels like he could he could see um some minutes similar to like the boost that Kevon Looney gave Golden State in the Memphis series I think uh so I'll be really interested to see what kind of adjustments they're making because all the pressure is going to be on them now with Dallas taking or with (laughs) Dallas with Boston taking this first game so I think that's everything. Uh, Let me know your thoughts on this game. If this was about what you expected, uh, hit the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, Predictions for game two or the rest of the series going forward. Let me know. Uh, Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.